Hello there. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm always on the lookout for the latest trends with presentations. So today I wanted to do a tutorial on something that Microsoft is soon releasing that's going to be a game changer for presentations, 3D capability. In late October, Microsoft gave us a preview of its amazing Windows 10 Creator update being released in the spring of 2017 with a 3D version of the Microsoft Paint program and with eventual PowerPoint integration, a complete industry transformer as we'll be able to make and work with three-dimensional graphics easily in our presentations. While Paint 3D is only going to be released next year, I still wanted to do a quick tutorial to give you a preview for what you can do with the program so that once it's available to you, you can get started with the tips and tricks here right away. I'll show you how to get it if it's available in your country just a little bit later. For now, let's do a spicy demo just to see what you can do with it. It'll open up a whole new world. So here's what the preview of Paint 3D looks like when you open it. From here, you can use the typical features of Paint to scribble here, but the real fun comes with 3D drawing if I go up here to this cube shape. If I go down here to 3D Doodle and go to the left one, you'll get some depth behind whatever you make. Let's say I'm making a simple star, for example. Let me draw that in here. Worst looking star ever, by the way. <laughs> then you can see the 3D by rotating it here like this, and then you can adjust the depth of the 3D as you like. Very simple example. Now, another classic thing you can do is, is make a cloud with the right side here of the 3D doodle. The cloud works really well with the soft edge 3D feature, which gives it a puffy pillow or balloon type of look. You can then look at the shapes from all angles by rotating it around like this, and then color them in further as you like. I'll make this gray, for example, just to make it a tiny bit more realistic. However, as you saw with my star, I personally have no artistic ability whatsoever when it comes to drawing from scratch. So my favorite thing to do in this program is use pre-made objects done by real artists and then customize them. The way to get pre-made objects is to go to this 3D sharing community called Remix 3D, which is already available in many countries where you can see objects uploaded by other users, including professional ones done by the Microsoft team themselves. Lots of very, very cool stuff here, as you can see. And by the way, I just wanted to point out that my username here is Spice. Now, why not P Spice or PowerPoint Spice, you might ask? Well, just because Spice was actually available, so I decided why not. This community is still so new that chances are if you join soon, you can get one of your top choices for names without needing to add a bunch of numbers after it to make it unique. It's like the early days of Gmail or YouTube, for example, the wild, wild west. Anyway, let's find a cool object to customize. So let's search up here for apartment building and let's scroll all the way down until we find the brick building that I'm looking for and click on this one. You can see that this is a very professional looking building made by Microsoft. If you click right up here on this paint icon, you can add it right into paint 3D. Now again, you can flip it around as you like, but here's my favorite part. You can actually customize it by adding something called stickers or your own images that get wrapped around objects. For example, just for fun, you can put your own customized graffiti or street art onto the building wall. Here's an example. I made this in PowerPoint out of basic shapes that I took from freepick.com, my favorite vector site. <laughs> and then I used uh, this font up here. And then I saved all of this as a picture. And then you can actually download this template from my free download link in the description too, to make it easier. And here is what's extremely cool. I go to stickers here then add my own 
and choose my graffiti picture, which then appears right here. I then resize it and adjust it on the building. Then I click the stamp icon here to finish it. Very nice. And if I rotate it, you can see that it's stamped right onto the building. Of course, if you're a really good artist, you can draw right on the building directly with the paint tools if you like. Now let's add one more sticker just for fun since we have a nice big space over here. Let's say you want to add a full wall advertisement or something. Let's say for your business or an election campaign or in my case, I can advertise my spicy slide pack, <laughs> which has most of the full slides to my YouTube videos. So I do the same thing as before and I pull out this sticker here, which I also made in PowerPoint, by the way, and insert it here resize and adjust it here by the way what's what's really cool is the sticker kind of molds itself to the shape of the building so it's it's a really nice touch okay getting it right up here and just one quick warning if your sticker touches the edge which is actually very easy to do when you're when you're doing this it will bleed over just like this onto the other side which is really not good so I'll do I'll undo that right here. I'm assuming this is kind of a glitch because it's it, it can happen very, very often and very easily. So I'm hoping that they can fix that for future versions. So the workaround for this right now is make sure that you leave at least a little bit of a border around your sticker to make absolutely sure that it, that it doesn't touch the edges. OK, stamp and our customized building is done so you can turn it this way and then you can turn it this way too. And now you can save it e either as a project in paint itself to, to, to work with later or export it as a 2D picture and use right away in your work. One other quick caution though, this preview version of Paint 3D produces pretty low quality stuff. So when I put the sticker on, for example, doesn't matter how good the resolution was originally, it's still pretty pixelated. The building itself isn't much better either. So I wouldn't use this stuff for say 4K monitors just yet, but I'm assuming that this will get fixed when the real version comes out. So you can see customizing things with your own stickers is a really, really fun. And you can customize or play with any object available on the Remix 3D site. As an example, if you go up here to my stuff, you can see all of the objects that I've collected as my favorites. And here's that gopher that I showed you earlier. Here's that world that was in the intro video. And here are all the other objects that I thought were really nice looking or were a great canvas for customization. And look at this really cool uh, dragon, for example, so amazing looking and so intricate. Definitely wouldn't want to ruin it by customizing it. It's perfect as is. And I can't wait to use this dragon and everything else here in PowerPoint with actual animations soon. So definitely lots to explore here in Remix 3D. I also wanted to touch upon how I did that cube that was part of the intro video. This is just a cube shape that I drew and then I pasted stickers with different colored sides with text onto it, which I also made in PowerPoint and then saved as separate pictures. Same exact process as I showed you with the building in terms of putting stickers on and I just really had to watch those edges to make sure there was no bleed over. So here's my final cube product. It's pretty easy to make actually, it just takes a little bit of patience and being careful with the edges. Now you may be wondering, how do you create that actual rotating animation look from the intro video with the cube and the spinning world or even the gopher that we saw? Well, that was a little bit of a creative workaround because right now you can't really use these in PowerPoint itself. So the way to, the really the only way to use them is the caveman way, which is just rotating them by hand in Paint 3D while recording the screen. You can then insert the recording back into PowerPoint, just like a regular video, and then crop the edges of the video to give it that pure background that matches the slide. And if you have a nice round object like the world, you can use PowerPoint's video cropping tools to crop to a circle.
You can record the video with a free screen recorder like Cam Studio, or even use PowerPoint itself with its screen recording tool if you have version 2013 or later. So it's not very elegant, but it will amaze your audience even if you use something as caveman as this because they will say, how in the world did you do that? Of course, once we have full integration with PowerPoint, we'll be able to make the movement perfect. But for now, this workaround still gives a pretty cool result. Now there are a ton of other things you can do with the Paint 3D Preview, but this overview should be enough to get you started playing with it. And as a final piece of this tutorial, let me quickly go through how you can get Paint 3D installed, and you do have to be a Windows Insider. Microsoft already has a great article for how to do this, which I've put in the description, so you can read through that for step-by-step -step instructions. But the one thing I will say is have patience because it can take a while for these Windows Insider settings to kick in once you've signed up for the program. I had to wait almost 24 hours, which is an, like an eternity when you're waiting to play with Paint 3D. So just have patience. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and it's inspired you to really think about how 3D can transform the way that we do presentations very soon. Imagine combining these 3D objects with the morph transition in PowerPoint to be able to seamlessly rotate equipment diagrams, building models, and so many more things. Presentations will never be the same. So thanks for watching. For another future-focused video, check out my hologram video tutorial. And for another spicy PowerPoint tutorial, check out my cinemagraphs trick right here. So comment, like, and subscribe for more videos and see you for my next one.